Right here you got a uh, APC MRO cooler. We got um, a display interface here. Scrolls through your status screens. Let you know what's going on. No alarm. Get, they're grouped. Eight, five. Um, get the group status. No alarms. Cool output 10.4. Get your set points. Your max the rack with the maximum temp. It then goes to the unit. No alarms. Cool output of the individual unit. All right. And then you have the unit ID. All right. You access the sub menus this way. On standby. Enter. Operate. Change it to standby. That's how you turn it off. Enter. Escape. Left it on. View alarms. Clear alarm. There's a good view of escape to get back to the last menu you are at. View event log. Um, set date and time. You know, a lot of this stuff you won't ever have to access. It's set up by APC. And by making adjustments in it, you're only going to. Uh, Use the group, damage the unit, but they're all, everything is explained in the IOM above and beyond that. You have a, you know, you're configuring your day about row, in row RC, model and serial. That's where you find that model and serial number, all that kind of information. Uh, set, uh, service intervals is something you're going to want to check. Uh, air filter interval 13, every 13 weeks. Enable, escape. You see a few run hours. You get run hours on the fans, air filter, condensate pump. You know, you can set up service reminders. It's going to tell you everything you need to do. Uh, you know, uh, it's going to give you an alarm. You need to change filters and stuff like that. Um, view group status. That's use one C. Cool output is 12.3. Cool demand is 12. Point, jumping around now, but they're matched. Cool output and cool demand are matched KW. Um, cool set point is 72 degrees. It's got the airflow for the group uh, in CFM. Um, it's got your max rack temp, your minimum rack temp. Um, that's all stuff that'll be useful in you know, seeing what's going on with the group. Uh, set points. Um, so anyway, now we're back to the main menu. There's a, roughly six sub menus, four items each menu, where you can access what you need to. There's uh, some of it is administrative, uh, is admin passcode uh, for the system. The filters on the back side here. There's two tabs up top. All right, like this. Take this. All right. There's two air filters in the back. Again, check them. They're going to give you a service reminder. But you know, based on conditions, you always got to know what's going on. You can. Uh, Sometimes the filters are a little bit of a bear to get out. But held in with two tabs. Alright. You, you, you access the evaporator coil from the side uh, once a year. You have a three-way valve, which is modulating based on demand. Right here. Um, you have all your isolation valves under the floor. Um, you have a bypass valve in here, air vent in here for the coil. Uh, what else did I want to show you? Condensate pump and all that. Condensate drain line under the raised floor. Uh, each one depends on the pump to get rid of condensate? Yep, each one has an individual condensate pump. 13. There's 13 existing in phase one here. There'll be five yep. more when we do phase There'll two. There'll be five more in phase two, yep. All the isolation valves are right in front of Is each, this up the floor in this hot aisle, oh. all the isolation valves are right in front of each unit. Under the, I'm sorry, under the floor. Directly, yeah. directly in front, or well, behind, as the case may be, each unit. I'll ask one dense question. Uh, when these are operating right next to a server, is there a failure mode where water gets sprayed on the server? There is. There is. Is there a failure mode where they do that? In, in other words, is there are there safeties in in um, yeah. in the logic? Yes, there is safety yes. in the logic, and it's. Uh, yeah. Yeah. There are there are water sensors underneath each yeah. in row as well. If you look underneath, you'll see water sensors are taped to the floor. 
down here, each one.